Hi and welcome back to the channel. And I'd just like to say thank you to Helen, one of our subscribers. Uh, Helen has a, an Etsy shop where she does lots of personalised gifts, gifts like uh, beach bags, uh, wine bags for presents, all sorts of things that, that are personalised. She's done us some great Jurassic Jungle t-shirts uh, with a link to our YouTube channel. So thank you very much, uh, Helen. I'll put a link down below if you'd have a look at her Etsy shop. So. Welcome back, and sorry it's been quite a few weeks uh, since I gave you an update on the project. Um, we've been managed to get a few days away from things here, but it's been pretty hectic, as you've seen behind me um, on the sort of new build side on this side of the building. We've got all the steels in, got the scaffolding up, we're almost up to the wall plate on this side. Great progress at the other end of the build as well on the garage so we'll do a walk around when I finish talking about some of the technology choices that uh, that we're making um, and you can see where we're up to at the other end so things happening so fast that I haven't really have time to uh, to get you updated so what I want to talk about today was one of those technology choices that I mentioned at the beginning about choosing uh, how we're going to heat the property so I've mentioned before how well we've insulated the property we're going to put underfloor heating in and um, with the solar and battery options that we're also adding uh, we've pretty much made the decision that we're going to go for an air source heat pump and that's partly because we'd have to replace the gas boiler anyway I had a quote to replace the gas boiler um, of around £15,000 which quite surprised me but you know you've got to look at it as this is effectively a, a new build so the gas boiler is going to be in a completely different location all of the plumbing for the property is brand new um, so it's really a blank sheet of paper that we're starting with. Um, also the gas meter is on the front of the house where we don't really want it to be. It's not pretty, the pipe goes up the other side of the house so we quite like to lose it if we can. And the research that I did going into this suggested that with a well insulated house um, an air source heat pump should be capable of, of uh, heating the place um, at similar prices to what we would with gas because of the levels of insulation, the underfloor heating, those other investments that we've made. But there are a lot of horror stories out there as well as success stories of how well air source heat pumps have, uh, have been installed. Um, and I've read a great deal into you know, how you operate them, the sort of controls that you need. But you know, one of the challenges I found on this project being effectively the project manager, although I've got a builder doing a lot of the heavy lifting work, I'm owning the technology decisions and running the project. Um, I'm sitting in the middle of all of these technology decisions, so I haven't got one prime contractor in the frame for, for all of this stuff. So my initial conversations were uh, with my underfloor heating supplier. Um, so they haven't done uh, heat loss calcs yet. That's something they would do if I chose to order a, a heat pump from them. They will do some of that even for the underfloor heating design. Um, but they don't install, they recommend a local plumber that we would work with. They give some degree of lifetime support, but I don't think it's really an underwritten warranty of performance particularly. Um, they had suggested a around a 12 kilowatt heat pump um, from manufacturers either uh, Nibby or Panasonic um, with a 300 litre hot water tank uh, that we're putting in the, the back of the garage. Um, we had then one of the national companies that's being really aggressive at installing air source heat pumps around to quote. Um, they actually, to be fair, spent five hours here doing a full um, heat loss calculation, so measuring everything, looking at the insulation levels that we've got, and they came up with a heat loss for the bungalow of just over five kilowatts. Um, so a lot lower than if you just looked at it and said it's 160 square meters and it's a 50 year old bungalow because we're closer to a new build in our levels of insulation than we are to a 50 year old bungalow. So the national company came in with a quote of just over 3,000 uh, pounds to supply and install the heat pump and the tank. Um, pretty aggressive. Um, the underfloor heating company was about eight and a half thousand pounds to buy uh, the heat pump and the tank. And then I think can't compare it precisely because some of the insulation costs I had from the plumber were for the underfloor heating as well as the air source heat pump, but you know, around £11,000. Um, so about £8,000 more to go with my initial underfloor heating company. Um, I shared with them, you know, roughly what the, um, 
the national company's heat loss calcs were and they came back and said oh okay well actually we could drop down to an eight kilowatt heat pump uh, i think that was a nibby one i then discovered i couldn't do solar divert from my pv so when i've got excess solar to heat up the hot water tank with the nibby um, so they said i'll oh, go back to the 12 kilowatt panasonic and that kind of makes me think they're just selling me what they've got on the truck and not really sizing it for me um, so i thought i'd you know they always say get three quotes so i got um Another company out uh, today, Fisher, uh, who came out, worked out the rough uh, volume of the property, asked a few questions about insulation levels and those sorts of things, but not in any great detail, said that heat loss calcs were not necessary, um, and came in with a 14 kilowatt uh, heat pump. Insulation cost about 11,500 after the grant. So not dissimilar to the underfloor heating company, slightly bigger, uh, heat pump but you know I've got this difference now between a 6 kilowatt and a 12 kilowatt you know and everything that I've read about air source heat pump says you should get one that's the right size you just want it to trickle along and not be cycling and turning on and off because that's less efficient um, but I've also seen some that suggest well you want to go 20% above what your heat loss is to when it's really cold that you don't want to be in a freezing cold house so it, it's really tricky and the thing that that makes me more nervous with that is um, you know I'm, I'm the one in the middle so I'm potentially got a plumber that's doing some work I've got a heat pump provider that's doing some work um, and if the house isn't warm do they end up pointing their fingers at each other and to expand that problem even further I'm looking to lose use the locks on home automation system to control the heating um, so I then actually got potentially three different people pointing at each other um, so I'm looking at how we can put the, the locks on system in uh, in such a way that we can effectively disconnect it, right? You know, and fault finding and things that, that I used to do early in my career, you know, you kind of look at a problem and cut it in half and try and work out where the problem is. So what I want to be able to do is put the um, air source heat pump in so that it can run on all the controls that come with it, prove that we've got a warm house with that or not. Um, so that I can prove if there are any challenges with my control system interfacing with that, right? So it's, it's, it's a bit of a challenge and I'm really putting myself potentially in a difficult situation of, you know, these different vendors pointing their fingers at each other and, and me not being able to get a resolution. So I'm a little bit concerned. Um, I think we might just go back and ask for another quote for a, for a gas boiler. But it just feels that, you know, going with air source should be the right thing to do, particularly we got, because we've got PV and battery um, that should be able to balance out some of those costs. So, yeah, really, really tricky. So, um, and we're getting under a bit of time pressure now. You'll see in a minute when we do a tour of the site um, that the, the garage is about ready to go. We've got the insulation down on the floor. So I need to get the pipes for the air source heat pump um, installed um, so that we can get the concrete down on the garage floor get the garage secured, move our furniture and stuff in there so that we can move out into the bungalow, into the bungalow, into the caravan, um, so that we can then gut the inside of the house because we're gonna rip all of the inside of the house out and um, fill the floor up so that we can put the underfloor heating in. So we're gonna need to be out of the house for um, a couple of months. Let's see where that ends up. <laughs> uh, but the caravan does have nice central heating, so we are okay if we're not back in as we go early into winter but certainly i'm hoping that we are we are um, we've placed the orders for most of the uh, windows doors that sort of thing so a lot of challenges looking at that as well uh, do we go with aluminium windows do we go with upvc so in the end we've gone up going with upvc aluminium looked nicer but the lower cost aluminium windows are actually not very efficient because of the thermal conductivity of the metal frame so you need to end up going with a, a pretty expensive um, window, you know, sort of composite setup or, you know, a wooden frame with aluminium capping, which was nearly twice the price uh, for, the, for the windows. Um, but we've also been looking on, on that because at the end of the house here, you can see we've got something like a five and a half, six meter sliding door. That will be an aluminium uh, because we couldn't do that easily in UPVC. But uh, again, we're looking at does it make sense to go triple glazed with that or get a more expensive glass um, just to make sure that the house is as insulated as, uh, as we can possibly make it. So, you know, that's as far as we are on the decision with heat pump technologies. 
I think it's going to be interesting to understand how this evolves. You know, which of those companies that uh, um, that we end up going with, and, and whether we are warm in the winter or not. I'm hoping with all the insulation we've put in that we are. Um, so this is going to be a, a, a series of uh, things to follow to, to work out whether we've uh, hopefully made the right decision. So we'll go now on a bit of a tour of the site so you can see where we're up to. Um, the next session that I'll probably be doing will probably be on the uh, home automation choices that I've made. And that'll be a, a series of uh, videos that I'll break down to talk about some of the technologies I've used in the past and the thought process that we've gone through to get to the locks on system that we're currently planning to uh, to install as we move forward. So thanks again for all of you watching. Um, I think we're at something like 85 subscribers now and it's been great to see um, not just friends and colleagues that I've worked with in the past following me but you know the audience growing and some of the feedback that I've had on the help that this is giving other people trying to make these technology choices. So thanks again for your support. Please remember to uh, click like for this video and if you haven't you know please subscribe if you haven't set up a YouTube um, account to do so please do that. Uh, you know I'd love to see the channel go and get the feedback from you. If you've got any comments or suggestions or any of you have got experience of going through this process of choosing or even living with an air source heat pump I'd really appreciate your feedback on that as well. Thank you so much. So we just take a quick look around where we've got to at this end. Um, I think I've got some video that I can put in. We've got all of the uh, the steel work in that you can see at the top. We had a crane here for a day putting all of that in. Uh, we've got the block work up on most of this. We ran out of insulation as I think I mentioned earlier. Uh, so just wait for a bit more of that um, 145mm wall insulation to finish off the block work on the other side. But as you can see we're up. We've got the uh, trusses up for the um, widening of the original property at the back there and we'll be doing the uh, roof on this end here as we go into next week. So you can see on the front of the property here uh, we're replacing all the roof tiles. The roof tiles we'd used uh, on the original property couldn't go down to the pitch of our new roof so um, we replaced all of that with Marley Modern uh, grey concrete tiles. Um, got solar panels in roof so we'll have a look at those in a bit more detail in a moment and our velux over the hallway um, the garage as i mentioned earlier has all been uh, prepped inside now um, so all the scaffolding's gone so you can see uh, the workshop space that we've got 100 mil pir under the floor ready for the cement to go in uh, the solar and wires and things are in there we haven't got the inverter or batteries or anything in here yet to uh, to do that but that'll be uh, coming on in the following weeks um, uh, but we'll just take a look up on the roof so you can see here uh, the solar panels that we've got on here so I've gone for the GSE in roof system so these are actually there's no tiles behind these they're sunk down flush with the roof um, we wanted that sort of appearance um, on here to look a little bit slicker um, I'd size the system for um, 14 panels um, and discussed various options with uh, the electrician that was helping me to to source these who lives locally um, and I was going to have six on the front and eight on the back and the, the panels that ended up getting ordered were, were um, a few inches wider than I'd done all the design for in the first place um, and I missed that so we've only been able to fit five rather than six on the front um, and if we go around to the back here um, you can see we've managed to get eight of those across the back of the roof. Um, I think we've been able to get another three over on the, the roof over here so there will be east west on here and then south over there so they'll need to be on some um, optimizers um, so that they can work because there's only two strings on the inverter. Um, what we didn't realize was just how enormous this uh, flat roof uh, area is because we've got a hot roof where the insulation is um, sat on top of the uh, like a top hat on top of there so there's 150 mil of insulation on that roof um, we've got a really large flat area so um, you do potentially need planning permission to put solar on here so whilst we were doing a change request on the planning or a, a non-significant uh, modification request uh, we just mentioned we might add panels on here later so if, if we were to apply for a G99 uh, which you do to export more than the sort of 3.6 kilowatts that uh, we have with our current inverter we've certainly got potential to put you know quite a lot more 
panels on the roof um, if that makes sense in the future the panels themselves are not very expensive I think these were just over hundred pounds each but um, this in roof um, mounting system that we wanted as probably costs quite a bit more than the panels uh, themselves um, so we were lucky that we got the electrician that lives locally to help with this working with the roofer um, so these have gone up you know relatively simply um, unfortunately not generating any energy at the moment because uh, we've not got it connected up but uh, as you can see some really good progress we're really happy with how things are moving forward so we just have a look in the in the hallway um, as you can see we, we're going to have a, uh, a vaulted ceiling in the hallway as we come in here um, the guys have, have got the velux window in that's going to be electrically operated with a, probably an electric blind on there as well um, had some fun and games with a wasp's nest up here um, uh, the other week <laughs> um, so vaulted ceiling that we've got along the top there and coming down the hallway that'll be the, the doorway through into the house um, doorway through into the garage that we just saw from the other end um, and into the um, utility room um, I managed to move some of the things out of the shed up here and then in the back here will be my home office um, so you know good good size property we're really pleased with how everything's moving forward and look to do all sorts of other updates for you um, so you know if you've got any questions or suggestions please uh, do let us know thanks again for all your support and watching the video and i hope to get another one back to you in the next couple of weeks cheers for now